Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. Hello, hello. It's exciting to do this video. I, I actually shot a Savage Dragon video of issue one and two, I don't even know, probably a week ago or 10 days ago. And uh, it went a little long for these videos. And I think I started um, maybe having a few too many personal opinions on different stuff throughout it. And I was kind of like, eh, eh, let's just enjoy Eric Larson's work and not break things down in such a insider baseball type way. I know people enjoy that part of the videos, but anyway, hopefully everyone is doing well. It is, I think, Thursday the 3rd. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Oh, I can, I'll give you a quick update. So I have 17 more pages of Crystal Planet left. They're all penciled. I just need to ink them, but it is coming to a close. It is exciting. There's a few hard pages left. I'm not going to lie. Hard just meaning time consuming. Nothing is really that much harder now. Some stuff takes longer, which can feel hard. But uh, yeah, I, I would say 17 pages I should be able to do in maybe uh, 26 days about. There's a double page spread that's going to take like three days, probably. Maybe a little more. It's, it's a big war going on, but it's starting to wrap up or you know what I mean? Um, so it's... Uh, you know, a lot to draw still. Had a page, oh, I had two pages in a row. One was over 50 characters on it, one was 60. Um, so it's a lot of work. But anyway, all right, Savage Dragon, the brutal first issue. Brutal. It's intense action, not just regular action. This is the intense kind. Makes makes you um, feel giddy inside. So look, honest, honestly, I really loved Savage Dragon. As the series went along, I, I definitely started to wane on it, and I'm not 100% sure why, but um, the first miniseries was great. The ongoing series was 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 real good, but it's somewhere maybe around issue 8 or issue 12. For some reason, I drifted away. Now, it is possible that um, there was a point... It was kind of weird. So, like, I, I started collecting comics around this time. Savage Dragon was already out, but... Um, I got really into it, and then my band got really busy, and we were touring a lot. And so I did three U.S. tours, and although I was still collecting comics while we were on tour, um, it was harder for me to maintain the hobby. So it could have been something along the lines of that, and then just when I came back to it. I know for a fact, though, that I actually bought Savage Dragon off the newsstand when we were on tour. I have, I have a copy of Spawn number 7 that I bought at a truck stop on a spinner rack, and also an issue of Savage Dragon and a heavy metal magazine somewhere that I got that I, I must have looked at that heavy metal magazine over and over again. I don't even know for a month, <laughs> like the only thing I had to do for 14 hour drives. But anyway, I loved Savage Dragon. I loved reading it. I love the story. I thought Eric Larson's characters were really well written. I, I enjoyed the relationships that Savage Dragon had with his girlfriend, with his coworkers, even with the cr criminals, it was really, really well done. And Eric Larson is a terrific artist. He has a very stylized look to his stuff, but as someone who now has worked very, very hard on their pencils and illustration skills, anatomy, perspective, blah, 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 blah. This guy really knows what he's doing. Although his work can be quite stylized, there's no doubt in my mind that he knows what's up and you know sometimes he lets it go and he just lets it fly he's not so worried about accuracy all the time but based on when i looked at the stuff before there were enough telltale signs that he definitely understands all this stuff and and quite well i might add so anyway let's get into this the first ball ripping issue <laughs> did i mention balls <laughs> all right well, i always like to look at the um uh, credits just to see if there's any familiar names. So Chris Eliopoulos definitely has worked on a couple of the other books that we looked at. Gregory Wright is a familiar name to me. I did not know Janie Wong. Um, I, I don't remember her name. Digital Chameleons, The Color Seps, and um, got a few other names down here. Tom Tom Mason. I don't know if that's Thomas Mason that sort of um, I've I've seen online. Um, I think he's a colorist. Uh, but uh, anyway, it could be the same person. Sometimes, you know, these people worked in comics is a different um, job, you know, but they're still around and doing it. Um, and, you know, some editors turn into writers, et cetera. You know what I mean? The, your your job title may shift a little bit. Mike Heisler, as I mentioned before, is a real interesting guy just because of the fact that um, Mike uh, was a letterer 
he ended up being editor in chief at Wildstorm, but he also wrote and created Union. So he's he's done a bunch of different stuff. All right, so baptism baptism of fire. We've got Savage Dragon leaping in. He does these fantastic cartoony hands that are so cool. And um, sometimes he actually draws even kind of more, I wouldn't call them realistic hands, but but um, I was actually pretty impressed by Eric's hands. Um, his, like, this character is just so wild looking. He's got gigantic skulls on his shoulders. And if that wasn't enough, he's got a skull belt. And if that wasn't enough, he put skulls on the ends of his daggers. Although not this one up here, which is a little perplexing to me. Why no skull on this dagger? An oversight, possibly? Me thinks so, because this looks like a skull. But maybe this is the only one. Th this one doesn't seem to have it either. I would have put them on all. You got to go all in on something like that. Um, I'd even put a, well, I guess the belt buckle, I was going to say at this point, you might as well put a skull on his crotch and, and a skull here. <laughs> Could have had a skull tattoo. All right, stop right you crazy. Oh, there is a skull there. Skulls, skulls, skulls. All right. Get him, dragon. <laughs> Okay, what do we got? I just did my taxes today. I'm giddy. I'm not getting any money back. I never do. I always have to pay. But um, I'm just glad to have it done. It's it's always annoying having to go through paperwork and numbers. Hey, speaking of paperwork and numbers, there's some money right there. All right, let's pull this out so that we can look at them somewhat together. Oops. Wait. Oh. Come on. What are you doing? All right. What is going on here? Come on. Trying to grab the corner there, all right. So and then where's the line? I'm better. Like it's funny. There's certain moves that I'm better in Photoshop, and then there's certain moves that I'm better in Clip Studio. I wanted to do in Clip Studio because of uh, um, I'm not as good with the canvas size shifts here. God damn it, my mouse is locking up. <laughs> Clumsy. All right. Anyway, so we've got Savage Dragon beating the poop out of this guy. My mouse is just not going to do it. My stylus is acting like an asshole, too. Uh, the skulls on his shoulders are freaking gigantic. That's crazy. It must have been very interesting for these guys leaving Marvel and then having the opportunity to, the, to do these books. It, it had to have been very exciting Man, this is so cool. He he's got a little bit of a Frank Miller thing that goes on with his work. Um, he, I noticed it a little tiny bit more in issue two of the book, but even it's interesting because it was almost like he was pre, he was almost like predating the Frank Miller when Frank went back to Dark Knight and did that second run because some of these more um, unusual character um, designs and stuff like that feel a little Miller esque. They're like they're a little. I don't know if whimsical would be the right word, but they're a little unusual. But this is awesome right here. And um, this is great, too. He, he uh, I I bought a collection of Amazing Spider-Man. I think I've actually bought in a couple, two, maybe two or three. Um, but uh, I got a pretty big run of Eric's work on Amazing Spider-Man. And it is, it is quite good. Real good, in fact. Um, Really nice poses, like dynamic. Again, that gigantic skull is hysterical. He makes it work, though, you know? Stuff like that. A skull wouldn't be as hard on a shoulder. I actually said this to Chris Stevens. If you know, uh, I think it's Chris 2D, he calls himself, something like that. The guy that does the really good, like, Copic marker drawings, and, and he paints stuff sometimes, too. But uh, Chris recently did a Judge Dredd, uh, or Judge... Yeah, I think it was Judge Dredd piece. Um, but the eagle on, on that guy's shoulder is a pain in the ass to draw, especially if you've got to move him around. It's one thing if you have to deal with it in, like, one drawing. But, um, yeah, like, that that eagle is actually hard to draw. Skulls, not so much. I think because you do so many heads in comics that something like that isn't as challenging. But, um, yeah, you know, uh, let me do this. Oh, okay. Let me shut this. I'm not going to do the second issue today because, like I said, when I did the video last time, it went way too long. And so I, I didn't really want to um, ha have the video too, too long. I respect your time and understand people because sometimes we just want to kind of get in and get out, get their comic fix and get out. Um, it, yeah, so it's interesting. 
It looks like certain blades of his have the skull on it. These two don't. And this one on his leg doesn't either. He's like, when you see him like this, he almost has a Lobo vibe. A little bit. Actually, I did a few pretty fun videos for Patreon over the last few days. I did two two really extensive deep dives into Todd McFarlane's Amazing Spider-Man work. Or, uh, Amazing Spider-Man, and then I did another video on Spider-Man. And we really broke down um, not only his evolution on the books, but uh, also his approach to drawing pages um, on a deadline and things like that. It was pretty interesting. And then I um, also did an Olivier Coipel 4 video. And what was the other one? I just did it yesterday. I can't even remember. I'll figure it out in a second. This is awesome. This is great. But I'm going to do Jasmine and Roger Ibanez um, after I do this today. And then I'm going to get to work for them. Um, fuck, what was the fucking video I did yesterday? I can't remember. I shoot a lot of videos and then sometimes I don't upload them. If it doesn't work for me or if I feel like... It, oh, it was Jason Fabok. We looked at three Jokers. That guy is good, man. Holy shit. He crushed it on that stuff. It's really, really awesome. I'm very much, I've said multiple times in the video, really looking forward to seeing what he does next because that dude is, he's hes gotten so good and he's on the upswing. So it's not even like, there's no doubt in my mind that what he does next will be even better. This is great. This is awesome. Looks like you put a little bit of screen tone on this panel. It's kind of interesting. You know, sadly, I'm under the impression that Eric Larson lost a lot of this original art in a fire. He had a fire sometime in, I think, the 90s at his house, and I think he lost everything. It's ironic that we're seeing this as I say that. Um, but uh, I'm, I remember hearing that and just going like, oh, my God, that is the... I can't even imagine something that horrible. Um but um, yeah, because I had said, you know, this would be a really interesting book to see as an artist edition. See, this is very Frank Miller to me. All the all the image founders overall had had really good influences. They were looking at the best stuff. They were children of John Byrne and Buscema and Frank Miller and had had really, really good influences neil adams i mean you can see it all in their work and uh that is one that you know that that's a step that maybe people that are fans of the image stuff but really haven't gone back and done their their um homework or whatever you want to call it might might miss because you know we see the result of what they do but but you don't understand where it comes from Sometimes it's it's a good idea to even go back two generations of influences. I'm always interested in that. Um, you know, Frazetta got me into fine art, and I don't even think it was something that he was into that, that much. But when I got into Frank, I started to go back, and I, all of a sudden I was looking at illustrators, and the illustrators took me to, you know, painters and the painters took me further back than that and all of a sudden i'm looking at you know goya and rembrandt and all this stuff i did it for a couple of years um it was really interesting so i'm under the impression too that eric larson a lot of these characters he designed is like a little kid if it, i remember um his letters column was always interesting on this book and uh he would um show sketches and stuff like that but uh you know he's pretty proud of the fact that a lot of the stuff was were things that he created you know when he was I don't even know, eight years old, 10 years old, 12 years old. So and I don't know if the dragon necessarily was one of those characters, but it's kind of one of those things. I remember in, when I was a kid, uh, I loved Star Wars. And so I wanted to make a Star Wars, uh, my own Star Wars comic. So I called it Space Wars. <laughs> I dug deep for that title. Trust me. I was like, <laughs> Sandra Hope knows about Space Wars. I told her about it one time. It was funny. She'll bring it up sometime. She'll be like, when are you going to do Space Wars? <laughs> Although I think someone is doing something called Space Wars now. But it's all right. I would never use that title. But uh, yeah, you know, it's like you want to be a part of it. I, Dude, 
I was so psycho as a kid, and I didn't collect comics very long as a kid. I, I've told this story before, but I only collected comics um, for maybe six months as a kid. I was always into art, though, but um, I actually would sit with the Marvel Treasury edition of Star Wars, and I would try to type all the script on my mom's Olivetti typewriter just on regular paper, but I was obsessed with having the whole script typed out for some odd reason. But I would always make a typo somewhere, like, you know, I would um, hit the wrong key, and then I would have to start over. Like, that's how OCD I was even as a kid with, with how particular I am. So my psychosis runs quite deep. Let's like, give it a rest. This character is pretty cool, honestly. I. I had said when I had done the original version of this video, his character designs are so wild. It it made me think like what it would look like to see someone like Mobius draw this guy. <laughs> I don't know why Mobius came to mind, but I was I think because Mobius did a few um, like Marvel pinups, like painted pieces. There's an Iron Man, a Spider Man, and stuff like that. But yeah, I don't know for some reason seeing this character, I was like, I wonder what Mobius would do with these guys. Like it would have been kind of fun to see. I love Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider is one of my favorite, favorite Marvel characters. And the Hulk, for some odd reason. I don't know what it is about the Hulk, but... This is nice. Really nice sequence. He's using some very cool lighting. It's, it's you know, just like this nice kind of shadow happening on his face. It looks really, really good. It's He's just got a really good handle on all this stuff. This guy's pretty cool, too, actually. I love his um, silhouette of the Savage Dragon. It's just so cool. And I was joking, too, about his uh, pants. He's like, I think Eric Larson invented jeggings. Because, <laughs> like, Savage Dragon's jeans fit him so snug. We've got the big sound effect. So, I I was... I bring this up sometimes in videos. Um, I, I always wonder if if um how i would feel about this like if i did a big explosion page i'm not 100 percent sure i would want this as like a, just a big lettering thing unless i did it myself if i hand lettered it and put it on the board that's one thing but i, I don't know i mean it doesn't this one doesn't bother me that much but sometimes um those type of effects uh, can get a little overdone Usually, I mean, Larson wrote and drew this, but no normally speaking, um, if you see a comic book script, the writer will indicate, like, sound effects. Um, and then he'll have, like, his... his, his uh, t -t 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 or whatever. And then the letterer will put it in. I, I find it unlikely that a letterer would just start putting sound effects in. But I'm not working with any writers anytime soon, so... I'll be able to manage that kind of on my own. Wham TV, interesting. You, and, and this actually reminds me more of Ronin a, a little bit. Some of the some of the way that he draws this stuff has a little bit of like a Ronin vibe to me. The way that he would ink at times, I was feeling like like I was vibing a little bit. It could have been the second issue though. I haven't seen it as much in this book. But anytime you see TV sets in a comic book, I think people think of uh, Dark Knight Returns at this point. And this is kind of Neil Adams-ish, honestly. A little bit. Just way less rendering. But yeah, it's probably just a coincidence. Another thing, I'm not 100% sure I like gradients on uh, Word Balloons. This is quite colorful work, though. I mean, we've got we've got quite quite a bit of different colors going on: pink, green, blue, two shades of blue, and then orange and red lettering. It's kind of a little Wrigley's. <laughs> this is awesome. This is such a great sequence. I this reminded me of um, two things. It reminded me a little bit of playing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Grand Theft Auto, like when the sun goes down and you're in like one of the neighborhoods. And then uh, there was a movie that I saw on Netflix. It was an animated movie with these kids. And one of the kids' faces was like completely burned. He had like almost like a completely black sooted face with like eyes. I can't think of what it was called. It was It was pretty interesting, but they were kind of like in a gangbanger type town. And I think he had like pyro, he had like pyrotechnic kind of abilities. 
something like that. It was a while ago I saw it, maybe two, two or three years ago. I, I, I liked it, though. I thought it was pretty interesting. This is great. This is so cool. This was funny, too, is you've got, like, some of these really feel like, uh, you know, Marvel characters. Um, and, and it reminded me a little bit, too, of just, like, something that you would see in, in a Marvel book. Just this right here. It's like the thugs. Could have been from Punisher, Punisher War Journal. Something that Mark Silvestri would have drawn or whatever. But, yeah, it's got that kind of classic Marvel vibe. Cool, nice, solid, chunky head. dragon busted in it's an interesting choice to have his back to the camera i mean i get why he did it but um <clears throat> yeah it's kind of interesting this is cool now i like this actually behind him is very very cool thok 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 <laughs> Yeah, this is really interesting. These look like they might be pay stops, and then the actual this stuff looks like it might have been hand drawn. I've been kind of it's weird. I've been I've been really paying a lot more attention to late lettering lately. I, I think because of the fact that I'm gonna be doing my own book and it's definitely something I have to consider. But I'm particular about the fonts that they use. Um, you know, like even like in this. I was a uh, when I was looking at the Jason Fabok thing, I, I felt that the font um, didn't necessarily fit a Batman book. Like the actual, the dialogue um, font uh, was a little roundish. Mm -hmm. and, and for me personally, just my thing would be, I maybe would have liked sharper letters. It sounds weird, but make it, make, it can make a difference. Yeah, see like this kind of stuff felt a little um, Ronin, Ronin-ish in this too. It's crazy to think too. I mean, back then those guys didn't have the um, <laughs> artist editions like we do. This character is cool. I just don't like the hair on it here. But I, I want to say I'm nearly sure Star at some point uh, loses the um, that hair because I collected the mini series of of Star. In fact, I want to say Ben Herrera drew it possibly. All right, so we're at the end of this. This was fun. Really, really cool book. I mean, honestly, like this this first mini series is excellent and the story is really good. I I I I really enjoyed the characters and and the relationships that they had with each other. I thought it was really well written. So Eric did a great job. I mean, I think his his launch book for Image was really really solid and quality quality um comic book art and and story. So, all right, you guys all have a great day. I'm going to get to work. Well, actually, I'm going to shoot that um, Jazz Maynard video for Patreon really fast. Um, and then I'm going to get to work. But, uh, yeah, you guys have a great day. I'll be back in probably like five or six days. Like I said, my main focus right now is just finishing Crystal Planet as nicely as possible and as quickly as possible. So I have to stay focused on that and um, do a lot of lessons and reviews for Patreon. So that keeps me busy on top of the fact that... I provide content for everyone there, but I'm a busy person. I really am. So, all right, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great day. Bye.